Hello minders. Welcome back to the Mind Watercolor. We're going to do a little bit of a review and some gouache tips for you today. Uh, this uh, was sort of a requested thing. I did an episode uh, about a year and a half ago where I tested several gouache brands and, and ranked them based on my preferences and a number of you viewers out there bless your little hearts mentioned this gouache should not have been left out this is uh, Royal Talons gouache Royal Talons is a Dutch company it's about 120 years old it was founded just right around the turn of the century it's actually been owned by a couple other conglomerates it's now owned by Sakura uh, which is a Japanese company that's kind of ironic but anyway, uh, this is considered a artist quality gouache, top quality gouache. And I did not include this in the original review because about 25, maybe even 30 years ago, I had tried some and it was a total fail. It just was not gouache that I liked or thought was very good. So. But when my viewers talk, I try to listen, especially when several of you say the same thing, okay? I had several of you say, what? You did not include Royal Talents gouache? That's like uh, the best gouache out there. Or so some of you said. So I am writing that wrong, and I have no intention of getting into a long chain of gouache reviews. There's a ton of what I would call mid-grade or value-grade gouaches out there. I probably will not be reviewing any of those. Not that they are not something you can use or might use, but I stuck to the major brand names and what are well known as the top quality gouache. And based on your comments, I left this one out and so we're going to look at it. Now this is an eight color set. Uh, so to try it out, I just bought this set. This is actually a really good value. and. In most cases, uh, especially if you're just starting out with gouache, this is all you ever need. You would not need more colors than this. If you really got into gouache and felt like there were other colors that you should have, you could add them. But this is a good value. And as usual, all my products and supplies will be listed in the description. And if you're able to order uh, through Amazon, those links will be provided. So let's take a look at Royal Talons. I'm just going to swatch them out real quick. We will do this rapidly. You know, you never know what happened before. I, I don't know if their gouache has always been considered good. Uh, maybe I just got some bad tubes or whatever. All I know is I thought it was a cheap, crummy gouache years ago. I'm just going to swatch these out the way I would uh, regular transparent watercolor. Just a mass tone down to a tent. I'll go ahead and do the white just so you'll see it over black. Of course I have black in my brush still. Nice vibrant colors and generous uh, 20 milliliter tube sizes, which I thought was nice. Now I'm not mixing these, any of these with white for the purposes of swatching. A lot of times for opacity, uh, the colors will be mixed with white. So far we have black, white, lemon yellow, and just straight up yellow. I will pu also put a link to a downloadable color chart so you can look at pigment numbers and stuff. I'm not going to talk about that here, but um, it is, as I said, a quality, artist quality gouache. It's not unusual with gouache that the deeper you get in color, the less opaque it is. Now that varies with brand. If if you're looking for very opaque, deep colors, like uh, deep jewel tones that are also uh, very opaque, you probably will want to look at something like Winsor Newton. But when you get to about the value of this red, and this is permanent rose, magenta, 
you get to this value, colors will get quite transparent. Almost standard watercolor like. And I mean, if you think about the way you paint, that's pretty typical. Now, you see here, a lot of separation. I, I did get quite a bit. Uh, and I have tested these uh, tubes a little bit already. And I was scraping separation, binder separation, off the top of almost every one of these tubes. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Always is. But it's also fairly common. One of the things I do is I'll squeeze the tube up, get a tissue or a paper towel, and just scrape off uh, the binder until I get to just pigment. You can also plunge, if you have a stick like this, you can always also plunge in there and mix it a little bit. Mix it back in. Just makes for a kind of a goopy mess when you first start putting out paint. You can get these little craft sticks, which are uh, pretty easy to find at a craft store, and you just kind of do it like a butter churn. Mix it back up. Windsor Newton, for as expensive a gouache it is, it does this quite a lot. It separates. I'm still getting quite a lot. Speaking of binder, this uh, uses a uh, different than a gum arabic. A lot of gouache brands use gum arabic. This uses dextrin, so it's supposed to be creamier. I guess more like uh, maybe honey, which M. Graham would use. That's light blue cyan. And last but not least, in this eight color set, uh, is ultramarine deep now their complete range is 60 colors so if you do want to paint extensively in gouache you would have a good number of colors to choose from this is uh, you're gonna see uh, in this deep deep color this deepest color you're gonna see what I mean it's it's pretty much like regular watercolor it's that transparent that might have been one of the reasons I rejected it years ago uh, I was used to painting with something very opaque like Winsor Newton it really depends on what you're painting uh, in those days uh, I was using gouache more as a commercial art medium and so opacity was important because it was involved in graphics just this just a variety of things that, that kind of depended more on being opaque this is just a different doctrine in gouache this is more of a type of gouache that you would get for a painterly artistic approach. And the typical way of using it would be to mix this with white. In fact, let's just do that real quick. I'm going to paint that ultramarine. And now it takes on a very gouache-like look. And a lot of opacity. And there they are, the eight colors. So yeah, it seems to be uh, a fine quality gouache. Let's go back to my review of a year and a half ago, and we'll kind of put this in the ranking with it. I do think it belongs in that top six or seven. And let's just do a brief recap. So these in, in black were my previous top five. There was a sixth Da Vinci. I eliminated it from the list since it was very transparent compared to all these others. And these are my top uh, five of preference. And what are, I'm going to put Royal Talents down here towards the bottom. Even though I have it ranked above my Marys, I would put it in about a tie. They seem pretty comparable in performance. Now, one thing I just wanted to recap about all of this uh, ranking is that the ranking doesn't mean a whole lot. By the time you get into these top five or six, you've got a really good quality gouache. And I would recommend any of them. Now, what I would instead encourage you to do is look at the characteristics that mean the most to you. Uh, number one is, for me at least, is availability locally. I like to be able to run down the store and pick up a tube if I can. And in that regard, if I ranked it by that alone, M. Graham would be my choice because I have a local dealer that has a rack of them. It could be that light fastness is something you're really concerned about. All of these have enough. I would say they have enough that you could pick a completely light fast palette if you want to. This is the percentage of their range that is light fast and very good or better. Very good or excellent. Uh, my Mary actually all of their gouache line 
was very good or excellent. M. Graham is sort of hitting my top gouache just because it's locally available. I like M. Graham anyway. I love their, their watercolors. If you're a regular viewer, you know that. And their gouache is equally uh, top quality. The only drawback to the M. Graham gouache is they have the smallest line. Only about a 35 color range. But that's not a problem for me. They have every color uh, I would want. Price may be something else uh, that you rank. So don't say, oh, Schmincke's at the top of the list, so that means if I want the best, I gotta get Schmincke. Uh-uh, no. This is a great gouache, this is a great gouache, this is a great gouache. This is, uh, Windsor Newton usually ticks most boxes for everybody, even though I have it in the middle. Um, it's one of the easiest to get. If you go into a local art store, you're most likely to see that. Um, Schmincke, even though I rated it for characteristics at the top, it's difficult to find and get a hold of in the states you usually have to order it uh i've been in some major art stores we don't have any big ones where i live but i've been into a few in some of the surrounding cities none of them have schminka none of them have holbein you can almost count on getting windsor newton sometimes m graham royal talent sometimes uh, my mary usually not available so it's the characteristics that mean the most to you maybe color range so Holbein and Windsor Newton are going to top your list since they have the biggest color range. And Windsor Newton had the least number percentage of very good light fastness or better. And it's a little disappointing in some of the range, like the reds, there's a lot of uh, colors that are not light fast or, or not very good or better. But still, I would say with the size of their range, there's enough. There's enough for you to build a light fast palette if you want one. If you're a sketcher, you don't care that much about light fastness, and you're not going to worry about it anyway. So I just want to make that plug. Uh, the strict one, two, three, four, five, six ranking is really not necessarily meaningful when you consider what means the most to you. They're all good quality gouache, and I wouldn't be afraid of it. And if you really don't know for sure, just pick up one or two tubes. Don't go buying a whole set if you're really kind of doubtful about the quality. But so far, and I haven't used it much in actual painting, I will. So far, I, I could recommend the squash. All right, let's get into this a little bit. And I know a lot of you are going to ask about this palette. Uh, I'll have it listed down in the description. Uh, off the top of my head, the name doesn't come to me. It's just uh, meant for mixing more opaque type paints like oils or acrylics. Works for gouache too. Allows you to see the opacity. It's just a, a middle gray value palette. So I like to use it for gouache, especially if I'm putting out the gouache brush. But uh, I'll have the link below if you want to know what that is. Tip number one. Gouache is watercolor. <laughs> Here, a lot of you are probably saying, oh man, that's a jip of a tip. I already knew that. Well, okay, think about it though for a minute. And this is a common uh, issue, is people tend to forget that it shares a lot of the same characteristics as transparent watercolor. So just because it will paint opaquely doesn't mean that it has to. It is fully and completely watercolor. Yes, it has some different characteristics, but uh, I want to explore for a minute how many characteristics like watercolor, like standard transparent watercolor it has, all right? You can do translucent washes where you get that luminosity of the paper coming through. You can do very wet washes. In fact, my favorite way to paint with gouache is to go transparent until I can't go transparent anymore or until I need to go opaque. It will charge wet and wet. The difference you'll see is flow. There's a little less flow to um, gouache in a wet and wet charging situation, but it does charge and bleed. It's watercolor, okay? That's also to say you don't have to paint differently. You can paint the same way you paint with watercolor and just work up to the opaque bits. This is actually a way a lot of gouache painters do. Now, true, there are some gouache painters that just go right into doing these mixes with white and just start painting very opaquely to begin with and get that classic gouache look, but you don't have to. Now, that also means, and I, have, I brought out my a very small little uh, Sennelier transparent watercolor. This is all transparent watercolor. 
they're totally compatible totally compatible so you recall my comments just a few minutes ago as I was swatching about the deep tones and how in a lot of watercolor or a lot of gouache the deeper tones are more transparent so actually you can use uh, those deep tones from watercolor transparent watercolor you don't need to buy those colors this is commonly done now a rule of thumb that I stick with is I bring transparent watercolor over to my gouache I don't bring gouache into my watercolor only because I don't want to get a lot of gouache in my transparent watercolor palette all right I do have a Schmika palette that you've seen me use several times that's a hybrid and I'm not as fussy about that one but for the most part I bring my transparent watercolor over to my gouache here's like a thalo green okay and then we're gonna pull some white into that And we're getting that milky, chalky, classic gouache look. But let's go back to it for a minute to the idea that gouache is watercolor and shares a lot of the same characteristics. And you can blend in the same way you would blend transparent watercolor. Just keep using water. Until you blend out to whatever you want to blend out to. Nothing. In your underlying layers, your base layers, uh, this is probably a good idea anyway. You should go thin to thick. Now we're going to lay down that lightest value, more or less. It's mixed with white, so I'm getting an opaque, flat sheen. And now I have a classic, classic gouache swatch here. A couple ways I could blend that. I could go ahead and add that while it's wet. And then blend it out. Another way would be to wait till that dries. Probably a little more control. And then blend a dark gradient on top of it. And you see the granulation in here of that ultramarine? That's a pigment characteristic. Looks totally like transparent watercolor. So all that, again, just to say, don't forget that this is watercolor. You're not required to paint in thick, opaque patches of paint. You're not required to paint that way. It's, there's no rule saying, this is gouache, this is how you need to paint with it. It could be a really good, supportive companion to transparent watercolor. All right, tip number two. And this is a frequently asked question, just like with regular watercolor, what color should I buy to start out with? There's only one color I would buy to start out, white. Because of what we talked about and because of how compatible it is with transparent watercolor, if you don't know if you want to paint in gouache or you just want to try it out, just buy white. For heaven's sake, don't go buy in 50,000 colors. So I'm going to pull some of this white over here. It will give you the characteristics you need to experiment with painting in gouache. I'm just going to pull over an orange. And bring my transparent watercolor from my palette over to my gouache. And then decide how much white I want to put in with it. So, if you're just starting out and want to know if you want to get into gouache but are not sure, just start out with white. Tip number three. You can paint on a variety of papers, probably a bigger variety of papers with gouache than you can with transparent watercolor. However, uh, my personal recommendation is you stick with cotton and you stick with a cold press. Now, this is uh, cold press B. The reason I like it um, is not just because of these watercolor effects. If you paint on pulp paper, uh, you're going to have the same problems that you'll have, you have with transparent watercolor. Now, if you're more of a thick, opaque gouache painter, um, you're going to find that pulp paper probably works fine. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I say, you don't know what to do with one of those pulp sketchbooks or something like Canson XL, use it for gouache. However, uh, it's going to sit more on top of the surface 
It's going to re-wet easier, same as with regular watercolor, because this is watercolor. And these kind of nice uh, watery washes are going to be a little more of a problem, just like they are with pulp paper. They're not going to be as consistent. They're not going to be as vibrant. They're going to lift easier for underlying layers. And I layer a lot, so that's a big deal for me. Now this, what I was swatching with, this is a Stillman & Burn Beta. This is a uh, cold press, but pulp paper book. Now these are great uh, for ink and wash. I use them a lot for line and wash or pen and ink. And they're fine for uh, single layer or very light layering. But I want to show you the difference between painting on this with gouache. We're going to go ahead and take a wash here that's got uh, some white in it. I like the texture, by the way, of cold press, or whether it's it's pulp or cotton, just because I think you can get a smoother wash that way, or a smoother lay down than you can on smooth paper. Smooth paper is a, a little more akin to like painting on glass. If you've ever tried to paint on glass, it just streaks. A little bit of tooth to the paper is nice. Uh, in fact, a lot of illustrators use uh, high quality Bristol. Uh, gouache painter that I knew for years, professional, really fabulous work, and he used Strathmore 500 Bristol. I'm going to lay down a, a similar swatch over here on this cotton paper. It's a little more tooth to this bee. I just think that uh, cotton's absorbency helps you out when you're layering and it gives you a little bit smoother lay down. It's really difficult to see on camera. This is a bit streakier than this. Alright, these two are dry. I've also painted a dark color here. We'll get to that in a minute. But I just want to show you when you start to layer gouache, you have a re-wetting issue you have to watch. So um, I'm going to layer uh, a light, sort of a peachy color over this color. you do it lightly you're in good shape I'm gonna pick up some more of this but I've already started to pick up this pink underneath here right here so the underlying layer has re-wet and is starting to mix with the paint on top it's very subtle but it's there um, and two reasons for that uh, cotton paper tends to hold the paint grab onto the paint and hold it a little better and also the tooth. This has a little more texture. Uh, the tooth will do that to a certain extent. So you may actually prefer this. All I'm trying to do is show you the difference. Uh, underlying uh, layers are going to pick up much easier. See, just a few strokes and I've already mixed that top layer with that underlying layer. Now for those who paint fairly heavily with a lot of layers of paint and they want to blend quickly and easily, you're going to want to paint probably on something like this. The, the caveat to that is the more paint you build on top of this paper, either paper, the easier it's going to lift and blend. So even this paper will eventually build up paint to the point where it's going to lift and blend in easier. But I like the fact that your first layers don't pick up that easily because you're painting usually very thinly like like this to begin with or at least I do I do again there's different ways to paint but my purpose is to show you your options all right uh, let's talk about another tip I think this is tip number four and that's called backing um, sometimes you want to get a bright light color I'm talking about bright and vibrant over a dark color and this is where gouache shines is its opacity now here's the problem if I go right for a bright color right out of the tube which this is and remember what I said about the deeper the colors get the less opaque they are so I'm getting some opacity but I can see right through that orange so to make it opaque obviously I've got to mix it with white. Now we're assuming for this demonstration that I'm wanting a very very bright orange. So I've got to have a balance here between white and orange. 
enough white to make it opaque but enough orange to say I got an orange it's still not very bright okay so what are you to do well there's a technique called backing and it's used in screen printing for colors when you print bright colors on dark fabric and that's basically you just you back with white so now it could be white or it could be an almost white it doesn't have to be white white but I'm gonna take white and I'm gonna use a bit of water I think what I would rather do is, is use water and build this up rather than just thick paint I'm gonna coat both of these again and again what I'm doing here is I'm showing orange pre-mixed with white versus a backing technique and we haven't gotten to the backing yet so hang on just want to build these layers up all right so this is the point of the whole exercise right here so I put out a little bit of that orange on the palette without mixing any white in there this is what happened when it went down right out of the tube or just the way I have it on my brush uh, actually there was a lot of water in it so uh, it would be a little more opaque uh, if I got a little thicker paint like that as that dries it's gonna get darker this is that color mixed with white trying to build it up trying to make it as vibrant uh, a orange as I can while mixing it with white but this is a glaze over white so that's a technique uh, just to keep in mind if you need a really really brilliant color and you're just not getting it by mixing it with white and you need it to be opaque so basically you're building up that the area with a light backing color and then you're glazing it with the fresh out of the tube color now look what happens when I take that glaze and I, I dry brush it and blend it with the underlying layers of white all of a sudden all that intensity is gone if you really want to get into gouache just get get it out and play with it like this and see what it'll do try some of the things I tried just to show it to yourself try it on different papers try it on a cotton paper like this try it on a pulp sketchbook like this you may prefer the added rewettability where you can do some more immediate blending you may prefer for the underlying wash just to stay put like I do getting to know a medium being proficient with it is just a matter of getting to know it and putting in the brush time the brush miles till uh, you know how it's going to react when you start putting it down all right thanks everyone hope that gave you some ideas hope that answers some questions about this squash in case you had any or introduced you to it if not and I hope those tips were something that you'll try and can use. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you so much, patrons, for your support. So very important. And we'll see everybody in the next video.